And with that, we welcome you into the second half hour of what's new on this Thursday afternoon. Betsy, you and I spent some time outside today grilling before the show, as we often do. <laughs> and I'm not making this up. It's we, like the this, second time <laughs> ever, but that's okay. But we did spend often, some time uh, before the show grilling. We certainly outside. did. It was marvelous. Yeah. Uh, it's a cooker out there, it especially is. when you're standing in front of a hot grill. We, we were in front of the hot grill in the blazing sun with a white, you know, tablecloth <laughs> blaring us in the eyes. So, yeah, yeah it was just a little, bit, uh, a little bit crazy out there. But certainly, I have a hair or something on my nose that is driving me crazy. Yeah, you better take care of that. Oh, well. I want to make sure I have my eyes uh, nice and squeaky clean because I'm going to give you an update now on what's going on with the Artemis 1 rocket that is down in Florida. NASA engineers have been hard at work on that rocket at Kennedy Space Center. They did indeed leave it on the launch pad, and they've now built a small enclosure at the base of the rocket where they will make repairs to two leaky liquid hydrogen fuel connections that scrubbed Saturday's second launch attempt last week. Now, in a briefing call today, NASA leaders said a change in manual fueling procedures led to a line being overpressurized and that there isn't any one person to blame. Our management team apologized to that operator because we had made some manual procedure changes between um, the attempt on Monday and the attempt on Saturday. So where we normally relied on an automated sequence, we had folks um, doing some manual procedures and we practiced it during the week, but it, it, they'd only had a couple chances. So we all own the process and, and Mike just hit on it well. This is all of us, especially us as leaders and, and how far and how fast we're pushing the team. So it was, uh, it was, as far as I was concerned, everybody's finger was on that switch. Well, the repairs should be done tomorrow, and then ground crews will begin to set up for testing mid-month, September 17th specifically, assuming all goes well, and of course, the U.S. Space Force gives them the green light. Well, that next launch window will be set for September 23rd and 27th. So you may be seeing information online that says Artemis 1, September 23rd. That is still very much up in the air. That is their target date for launch. That launch window, it's a two-hour window once again. Is it like 6.30 something in the morning? So it's very early. be a twilight launch, which could be gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, but they have to get permission from the U.S. Space Force. And the, what they're waiting on is batteries for something called the flight termination system. They have a shelf life on them. They have, you know, they've been asking for an extension on the shelf life of those batteries from the U.S. Space Force. There's also some other things that come into play. They don't want to launch any time that something else like SpaceX is going off or anything right. like that. And then they have to go with, you know, the mechanics of the deep space network and what is being used, the resources for communication that are also being used for other projects. So they're trying to kind of weave their way back in on all of this as well as work it into their own launch windows, which will allow them to get into the right orbit in order to get to so the much going on. It is. I'm not the expert. I'm going to defer to you on this. As I was listening to the sound in that piece, mm -hmm. my eyebrows went up a little bit. Yeah, and that's what mine did uh, Saturday in the media briefing after the scrub happened when they say inadvertent overpressurization of a quick disconnect. I was like, they never say the word inadvertent. Yeah. And, and then overpressurization, it, it would imply unexpected, right? Sure. And then inadvertent would mean a mistake. Yeah. So that was a big red flag. And what ended up happening is uh, just like you probably have quick disconnects on appliances at home, grills or any any gas appliance, it's, it's like a little nozzle that goes together and you can yeah. quickly pop it apart. They have these quick disconnects on eight inch hydrogen fuel lines for this rocket. And the reason they do that is it stays connected. And then as soon as they ignite the engines, those things retract yeah. and the rocket is up and going. Well, they over pressurized that quick disconnect and it popped the seal. So they had to replace these eight inch and four inch seals yeah. on the liquid hydrogen lines. Hopefully she's all fixed and ready to go. I'm hoping to, yeah. fingers are crossed.